Hello, Teddy Thompson. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm all right, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, you're with Lissy at the moment. Uh, at the not rest with of her. her. Whatever you. Not mean, with her. Not. You're supporting her. But even that could be misinterpreted. <laughs> it could. We, we have a musical alliance currently. Yes. Right. Yes, I'm. I'm yeah. opening for her on um, some UK dates. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what's the deal with it? What have you, have you done any so far? We're in Nottingham now. This is actually the last night. Oh, the last so one, we, we've right. We've done, you know, 20 maybe. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how have they gone? Very well. Very well. Good audiences. I've been brilliant. <laughs> She's been pretty good. So yeah, good stuff. Perfect. Um, what, what's kind of the plan for, I mean, obviously, what was the plan for this tour? So, so when you set out with, was it just to sort of, you know, musically, well, go on tour with Lissy. Was, was there any kind of collaboration behind it? Was there any, what, what, what was the idea in going on tour with Lissy? Well, this was a, a somewhat unusual pairing. Usually, um, usually it's uh, friends most of the time, or people you know, people, musicians that you like. Yeah. You know, somebody will, who either, you know, will have someone they want to bring along, um, or it's uh, maybe your agent, you know, or somebody has a business alliance mm -hmm. and someone says, oh, I've got someone that would be perfect with this. This was actually through record label because we're actually both on cooking vinyl. Okay. Or we have been for the last, our last record. So it was um, suggested and put together by, um, by the guy that runs cooking vinyl. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know each other, Lizzie and I. Right. Um, he suggested it and it was, um, it was a, good, a good pairing. And um, you, you've been doing, um, just shows where you had a shows meanwhile as well, haven't you? Uh, we mentioned off camera that you did one books them last night. So how how's it different? Well, how could you compare them? The two? Well, it's a lot shorter. Yeah. <laughs> opening. Yeah. <laughs> I quite like it. I don't know if it's my and and maybe I don't have a strong enough work ethic, but uh, I actually really like opening because you you you're. you're um, it's so much quick, quicker. I mean, I just mean your whole day is quick because you get here later, you have a later sound check, you have a bite of dinner, then you do a 45 minute set and then you're in the bar by 9.30. Yeah. It's quite nice. So, um, what's it like when um, fans hear your music for the first time and then, and then you get to play it live for the first time? Talk, talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, so that's good. Well, I mean, part of the reason for doing this is, um, you know, I've been doing, I've been playing music for quite a long time now, mm. almost 20 years of touring and playing and, and um, you get to the point, of the, well, I've gotten to the point in the last few years where you tend to just be playing to the same fans, you know, you do your own gigs and the same people come, not exactly the same, but, um, you know, the same sort of crowd and uh, it's good, to, when you're younger you do a lot more of this sort of thing, opening for people yeah, and people yeah. hearing you for the first yeah. time. And then that sort of stops happening, so it's important to um, to, to to keep doing this and mm. playing for new fans and trying to trying to make new fans. So mm. that was a big part of the reason for doing this tour with Lizzie. And she's got great audiences. Yeah. Um, well, so do you, do you think that you still get a lot of fans coming along to these shows then? And, and do you think that actually, um, I mean, you know, historically it's always been the support act that's been the one actually being supported by the main act um, because they're usually sort of. A, a less known act, mm -hmm. but it's arguably you. You're probably as known as Lissy. You know, you've you've definitely been going for a lot longer. Um, so so do you think it's maybe been the other way around this time? Um, no, I think it's still. It, it's yeah. It's not quite the traditional opener um, mm. headliner uh, dynamic because um, uh, there's been plenty of my fans here too. But um, but that's quite good too. It was sort of a win-win for everybody because it, it it it's she's got enough fans. Probably to just about well maybe almost sell out most of these gigs so she was fine anyway, and then to bring me on meant that uh, we could almost definitely sell out all of her shows, right. um, and uh, and there'd be enough you know so it's probably been about seventy thirty or something you know because she'd already sold tons of tickets yeah. before I was even involved so it's it, it's a really good it's good for at both ends good for both parties yeah. What's it like when you get to a city and you know maybe you've you've been uh, pl you've played the city a few times? So obviously, I'll say we're in Nottingham now. Um, have you got any sort of notable connections with Nottingham, or is there anything that you've been to visit in Nottingham? Or uh, you know, it's sad to say, but I have been here many times. But um, it's what you what I tend to remember is when you is the gig. Like I've played at this at this exact uh, venue mm. at least. 
three or four times and I remember playing it for the first time it was really good it's a great it's called a smelly horrible club but it's it's, it's really good to play in yeah, because yeah. it's really good audiences and it's got a good vibe and everything so um, I just sort of remember that and I remember the you know where I walked around like you go and walk around the, the square there and now it's all Christmasy yeah. and I remember that and you know the restaurant I ate at and that kind of stuff but it's um it's difficult because when you're on tour you tend to that t- tends to be what you do and it's really hard to find time to go and do anything cultural mm-hmm. unless you have a day off which maybe I just haven't had in Nottingham so um because usually when you're on tour especially now like this is the last night of the tour and um, usually the reality is you're just trying to get as much sleep as possible right. and so you do, it's hard to actually do anything greater right? so I can't say that I've seen that much of Nottingham more. Apart from you know Marks and Spencers and um, and the uh, boots of the chemist and the hotel, <laughs> we do have a very nice Marks and Spencers. It's lovely. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, now um, you've been playing music for a long time. You've been touring shows. You said a near near of twenty years. Um, does it ever get sort of? Does it ever get a bit tedious? Oh, yeah. Yeah, say, every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> so, it's, 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 it's not that bad. You, you know, actually, it's the last day of the tour. It's coming close to Christmas. You must just want to go home now. Yeah. Then, the, 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 is there a feeling that even though you want to go out and play, it's like, this is kind of like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. That's the, well, it's, you know, well, definitely true. Um, uh, it's also, yes, there's definitely that when you've been tired and people have been sick and they've been going for a little while and I guess you just want to go home because it's like, this is your job and you want to leave your job and go back home. It's just mm. the way everybody else feels. But, um, you know, definitely it's not, you know, it's, it's pretty great. I mean, there's no question that once you get, you know, once you get, it's usually leading up to it. As you sort of feel tired, and once the gig's happening, adrenaline kicks in, and you enjoy it. And you, if it's a good crowd and it's a good show, it's fantastic. Nothing beats it. It's great. It's a privilege to to get to do this. Um, and what I mean, I, I don't know if, if you have you ever been in like a band before. So no, no, I was never in a band. So that has a lot to do with it too. I've got to say that it's. Um, I mean, that's good and bad. I've toured with band with a mm. band. You know, I had my own band playing. And then you have. That's fun because you have like having your, your friends around yeah, yeah. and sort of you can lift each other up and keep each other company and not get bogged down. There's downsides too. Then you're all kind of cramped in somewhere yeah, and you've got to share a room with some smelly dude, <laughs> even if you've known him for ten years. You know maybe that's not that much fun. Um, but um, but I've never had that band dynamic where we're sort of all in it together and let's let's make it together. Or, I was going to say, because a lot of the interviews we do here in various other places, it's um, there's usually a lot of cases where people are kind of walking through the room and it's like, it feels like it's quite hectic and it's mm. like like that, but it feels quite sombre in it and it's, it's, it's this sombre. is just, 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 that's just my natural demeanour. Are, are you quite a relaxing person? No, um, um, I might be prone to the depressive, depress, depressive side of things, I'm, but I'm quite, um, um, I wouldn't say I'm so I'm quiet, yeah. I mean, but it's also the, uh, you know, uh, the di- you know, if you're just playing solo, like, there aren't people around. Yeah. It's just quiet everywhere. Yeah. It's a particular, you know, that's a particular type of touring too, because as I said, I've done different, and I do different types of touring, sometimes alone, sometimes with one other person, you know, maybe have a, another instrumentalist. Mm. Or sometimes you bring a tour manager, or you or you travel with someone. And sometimes they have a whole a whole band. But uh, yeah, when you're just doing solo shows, it's a very different experience. It's quite it's quite fun in a lot of ways because music um, creatively, musically, it's very free, and you just get to play. You know, you can the show is just you, totally self-contained. Um, and the ex- and the rest of the day, I'm totally self-contained too, and I can go where I want and do what I want, and there aren't other people to worry about. So I quite like it. After a while, it gets a bit tiring. Mm. You know, like, I wish my friends were here. You know, if you're feeling, but it's um, you know, it's it's not bad. It's, it's I quite enjoy it. I'm quite good at being alone. Mm. Uh, and your parents both musicians, weren't they? So, yes, so that, still are. that must have, they still are. Yeah. So that that must be a huge thing, and that must have always been a huge thing in in your kind of growing up period. Am I mm. am I correct in, in saying? That? Yeah, I mean the the. They're reasonably well known in a, in within a certain genre, within mm. kind of folky folk rock thing. Um, <clears throat> so they weren't 
they actually weren't that well known. I didn't get that much of it when I was a kid because they weren't really, for lack of a better word, they weren't really sort of in fashion. Yeah. <clears throat> and then folk came back around more recently, really, um, even after I've become a musician myself. And now people ask me about them a lot more now because the sort of folk revival the last, you know, what, seven or eight years, ten years maybe. Um, so yeah, it was a big, it's, it's a big part of my life, yeah, having your parents to do the same thing, you know. And did you always, was it always quite sort of certain that you'd go into something like that from, from quite a young age? Was there any other career paths that you thought you could have seen yourself going down? Or no, that was part of the problem. Right. I, just had, to have, I had no other discernible skills whatsoever, so I really had, I had no choice. I had no choice but to be a musician. This was the way you That's to the only thing they could do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good job, isn't it? Here, here it's we not, are. It's not bad. It's not bad, apart from the collapse of the music industry. But that's not well, <laughs> politics. Um, what's next for Teddy Thompson after, Teddy, after Christmas? Teddy Thompson after Christmas. Uh, yeah, well, after I hit all the Christmas parties and the office Christmas parties, I just go to them. <laughs> Pretend I'm the band. Just shut up. <laughs> no, so I carry a guitar. You can get in anywhere with a guitar. For really? A little tip for you. If there's music happening, unless it's like a high profile gig and you just carry an instrument, mm. you know, I've got to get in there. I'm like, I'm late. Like, oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, like the wedding crashes, but with office parties at Christmas. <laughs> so, I'm going to sleep with some fat secretaries in the cupboard. Um, uh, what's next? After that, I'm going to go to, I've been uh, producing a record for uh, these wonderful uh, women in LA, sisters, Shelby Lynn and Alison Mora, mm. and uh, we're going to go mix that record in California in, in uh, January, which would be nice to be in LA in January, mm -hmm. if only for the weather, and, um, and then I'm going to start another record of my own. Fantastic news. Yeah. Um, what what's that gonna be? Can you tell us when uh, that's gonna be and what it's gonna be? Or? No, not really. I don't know anything about it myself. Oh, yet. Okay. You haven't started that yet, then. I haven't. Got, I mean, I have, and I haven't. I think I haven't really, mm -hmm. really. So I'm not sure. But uh, it's going to be fast. Fast. Yeah. Okay. Fast paced or fast released or. Just generally fast. <laughs> Very fast. That's all I know. Oh, well, Teddy, we'll try and keep up with you. <laughs> Thank you for chatting to me. It's been wonderful. Yeah. No. Uh, good luck with the show. Thanks very much. And have a lovely Christmas. Okay, you too. Thank you. All right.